Microphone check. Test, test. Microphone check. Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning. Uh, give me a holler if you can hear me pretty good out there. I'd appreciate that. Just give me a holler. It's a good day to be alive. I'm going to wait for a few people to respond here. And as I, I'm doing that, uh, flip over to Hosea chapter number six. Hosea chapter six. Check, check. And I don't see anybody out there responding. So if you wouldn't mind, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me pretty good. I was having a little difficulty getting uh, the technical part set up. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Johnny. Good to see you, Johnny, today. Thank you. Ohio, thank you so much. Okay. Good. Uh, cease. And okay. All right, good. Mr. Bowman. Okay, great. Great. Hi, Gigi. Good to see you today. And Jess D. Okay, fantastic. I'm glad you all can hear me. First off, thank you so much for waiting uh, a little bit longer. I was trying to get on, and believe it or not, I got all the way here to this uh, beautiful park and left my device at home. So I said, I'm going to go home and get it. So so that's why I got. I was on a little bit later, right? Uh, at least says, nice shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Glad you like my shirt. I think I bought this when I was uh, uh, thrift store shopping. So so thank you so much, uh, Gigi, for turning me on to thrift store shopping. I like thrifting, and, and this is a pretty pretty reasonable shirt when I went to buy it. All right. <laughs> hey, how is everyone uh, doing out there, first and foremost? Just, uh, just type in the comment section how you're doing. How was your week? How is your day going so far? How do you feel? Type that in the comment section uh, now. For me, uh, my week was uh, up and down as far as events that occurred, but I'm happy to have gone through it because for the most part, I still remain joyful throughout it all. Okay, Johnny says, I'm doing okay. Great. I'm doing well. The gamer, fantastic. Yeah, I'm doing good too. I'm doing good. Again, it's, it's been an up and down week as far as things that were happening, but I'm glad I, you know, we got through it all. Mr. Bowman says, I'm doing good. Oh, Broman. I'm sorry, Mr. Broman says, I'm doing good. Fantastic. Great to have you here. Danny, great to have you here as well. Um, sometimes uh, for me, it takes a little bit of time to process the events that happened in the week. But after, you know, taking some time. Oh, no. Okay. After taking a little bit of time to, to deal with it, then I, I typically go back to uh, feeling and expressing the joy that God has given me. <clears throat> uh, I just seen a comment out there. And before we even move any further, uh, the comment says my husband is bedridden and having a stroke okay having a and had a stroke and the second comment i see is uh i'm, I'm doing good just a little sad since my brother has passed away okay okay so family let's pause together and let's pray for these two people here and if you don't mind doing that uh just type some prayer hands in the in the comment section to let them know that we're praying, praying for you. Okay, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you today. Thank you first and foremost just for being God. Thank you because you've given us opportunities and spaces and places and, and things that we don't deserve. But you've given them to us so that we can enjoy them. We don't take anything for granted, Lord. And so today, we're thanking you for what you've given us. Now, we have some very difficult requests, some very difficult expressions, but we, we want to lift them up in prayer and, and, and be in agreement with them even now. First, for the brother 
who is bedridden. His wife, who has expressed she's, he's had a heart attack or a stroke. Lord, we're asking that you be with her. Heal her. Heal her emotions. Heal her, her union as you've entwined them together as one flesh. What happens to him happens to her in some way, shape, or form. And so now, Lord, we're asking that you be with her and their family as they're going through this time of difficulty. Be the peace that surpasses all understanding. You're a great God. And we don't put anything past you, Lord, to do. If it is in your will to raise him up off of this bed, please do so in a way that they all know you are God and you can do all things when you wish. If it is in your will that he remains this way, comfort and give the peace to the family that love, respect, and honor him. Lord, we're also asking for prayer for Gigi, who has lost her brother. Family is important. And Lord, when you have a family that you wake up one day and is just not there anymore, it hurts. You know this. We're asking, Lord, that you heal Gigi, heal her heart. Bless her, Lord. Give her peace that surpasses all understanding. And those who are connected to this beloved brother, be with them even now through this time of grief. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody who agrees, just type or say, Amen. Listen, we're going to be with you both in prayer and um, uh, we'll just keep lifting you all up however and we'll help however we can. All right. Thank you, family, for praying uh, this prayer with us as well as they as they are going through this, and even as we all are going through our individual things. OK. Um, I want to I want to tr transition here to. The word of God and what we're here to talk about today. It's going to come from Heb, uh, Hosea chapter number six. And specifically, we're going to look at verses one, two and three. Okay, one, two and three. In this passage, you're. You're going to see. The 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 treacherous tale of Hosea and Gomer, and you're going to see more of the unfailing love of God towards someone or a group of people. Who said they love him, but are showing different things. And from this passage, one of the things I think we should consider is what are we chasing after in life? What are we really chasing after in life? What am I pursuing in life? What am I chasing after in life? For the purposes of our notes today and for those who are looking at this later on, just type this down in the comment section. And for those who are new, I asked you to type things in the comments so when people come back and look at it, they can see our notes and they can see where we have gone in this Bible study and how it connects to our life. OK, so the very first thing I want you to type is Hosea chapter six, verses one through three. Hosea chapter six. Verses 1 through 3. That's our text. And then the second thing I want you to type is the title 
which is what am I chasing after in life? What am I chasing after in life? You know, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a big time football star. That's what I wanted to be. That was my passion. That was my goal as long as I knew about it. And so uh, somewhere around middle school, I picked up football and I played and and I tried to get better at it. And I did. I lifted weights and I, I worked on my vertical leap and I worked on my catching. And my dad took and put me into, you know, places and, and, and camps and things like that. That's going to make me better because I wanted to be a big football star. And I did anything that I knew in order to be a big football star. Well, I took it pretty far. Uh, I, I played uh, one year in middle school and then I played all throughout high school. I was a captain of the football team in high school. And after high school, I went on and I played in college and, and, and something happened in college. When I got to college, I began to find other interests. I still liked football. I played football. And in college, you have to keep so many classes in order to play on the team. So I played football. But what I found out was there was other things I was interested in. And there was one season in particular where I was delayed from playing uh, due to some type of athletic clearance. So I wasn't able to play with my, my team. So what I did was I joined, believe it or not, a speech and debate team. And while I was waiting to be cleared, I would go on these speech and debate tours all across the, the nation where we would get up and we would speak and learn how to develop the craft of public speaking. Well, I enjoyed that. Had no idea it was there. It was a passion I found while I was on my way to pursuing a football career. Anyway, after my senior year of football and my eligibility was, was burnt up, I didn't have a desire to play football anymore. It wasn't fun for me. But what I did find was a knack to speak. And what I did find was an enjoyment in watching other people grow. And what I did find was there were gifts and talents that were opened up along the way to me pursuing what I thought was going to make me happy. You see, sometimes God does that in your life. He allows you to go down a course to pursue happiness as you understand it. And along the way, he allows you to see the things that actually bring you joy. There's a difference between joy and happiness. There's a difference between love and lust. And what I'm going to show you today in this passage, through the example of Hosea and Gomer, is that your pursuit of happiness and your pursuit of something that is short term may actually be running away from the very thing that's going to cause you long-term joy. Let me explain first by reading to you the passage, and then we'll come back and show you how this applies. Take a look at Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. It says, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us 
in the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord is going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain as the latter and the former unto earth okay chapter 6 verses number 1 through 3 in the book of Hosea is a continuation of an ongoing simile the simile or the picture is this there was a physical man named Hosea who married a physical woman named Gomer Hosea was a righteous man and he is supposed to represent God Gomer is a promiscuous woman and she is supposed to represent the children of Israel God ordained this union to come together as a picture or a simile of how the children of Israel are in relationship with God it's a visual picture okay so this ongoing relationship chapter after chapter verse after verse shows us how God loves a people who are choosing to pursue lust or what they think is going to make them happy here's the next thing I want you to type in the comment section type love does not equal lust love does not equal lust let me take some time to explain this so that you understand it will you give me 60 seconds to do so type explain this please love does not equal lust you see amari love is long term it gives it wants to build up and it wants to see the best for you lust is short term it takes it consumes you and it does not want the best for you okay the difference between the two is this love long term lust short term love fulfills you lust keeps you desiring more and more because it never fulfills you If you pursue lust or lustful desires, you're going to pursue something that is never going to fulfill you. It's like drinking a soda when you're dehydrated. You're never going to be properly hydrated because the carbonation in the soda keeps making you thirsty. Do you all understand that one? It's, it's like it's like trying to to fill your hunger with junk food. You won't get what you need from it ever in life. Lust is the opposite of love. As it is, lust being the opposite of love, the, the two could just as well easily be cousins to happiness and joy. Let me explain. Happiness is your emotions tied up to what happens at that point. Whereas joy is a constant sustaining feeling. Things could make you feel bad for a moment or good for a moment. But regardless, you're still constant because you know God loves you. There's a difference. My feelings aren't based on what's happening at the time. So. When you look at this relationship between Gomer and Hosea, you have Gomer, the promiscuous wife, is going out looking for lustful flings or looking for things to make her happy. I want something to happen now so I can feel happy. I want something to happen now so that I can feel this temporary moment 
of bliss. Can you be honest with me, Bible Talk 2 family, or, or just those who are passing through? Do you want to be happy? Type, yes, I want to be happy, or type, no, I don't. Do you want to be happy? See, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be happy. Sure, everyone wants to be happy, but I want you to understand what it actually means in the long term of things. Sure, people want to feel that moment of bliss. People want to feel that I, I, I'm okay. I'm great. I want to feel good. People want to be happy. When I was playing football, I was happy. I enjoyed it. No greater feeling than to put on a pair of tights and run around the field and knock over people who you don't know and will never see again. No greater feeling. It's one of the legal places where you can just run people over and you get to line up and do it again for another 50 plays. Afterwards, we shake hands and say, good game, good game. Let's come back and do this again next week. That's happy. For two hours, I'm happy. But guess what? It didn't give me joy. Because that happiness only lasted for two hours. And that two hours only lasted for a certain season of time, two or three months. It wasn't something that was going to sustain me. And what happens is, family... We have a tendency to do the same thing in life. We turn to things that make us happy. We turn to things that make us feel a temporary bump or spike for a while. And then we go right back to the realities of life. Let me ask you a question. And I want you to type it in the comment section now so I, I can see it and I'd love to read them. My question to you is this. What things do people do to make them happy? What are the things that people do, yes, Benito, in the short term that make them happy? What do they do? Type it now. I'd I I love, I love to hear from you. What do they do to make themselves happy? Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. Some people say riding my bicycle and working out. I love it. I love to do the same things. I go out, go buy things, says Sal. <laughs> hey, I do the same thing sometimes when I have a budget. I just bought a couch today that was in my budget. A bag of chips and a Pepsi. Yep. I've done that, too. <laughs> go eat something. Play video games. Read my Bible and run and yes, play video games, work out and eat. I love it. I love it. Work out. Yes. Look at, look at all these things right here. Thrift store shopping. I, I, I love it. Yes, I love you. I love, I love. We, we got to do this sometime, GD. Thrift, thrift store shopping. <laughs> Read scriptures. Yes. Somebody says go to parties. Yeah. That, all these things people do to make them happy. And listen, everything that was in there, video games, thrift store shopping, drinking Pepsis, eating chips, buying couches from thrift store yard sales is what I just did. All of those things are short term. You can't have joy doing those over and over again. It's something that causes you to go up and then drop, up, drop, up, drop. What does that got to do with the passage? Gomer is pursuing the up, drop, up, drop, up, drop. She's pursuing the happiness. She's pursuing the, the fleeting, lustful desires. The things that are going to give her a temporary spike and then a drop her lower than what she was before. The whole pursuit or the whole chase for Gomer is to find the temporary high and then go back down to lower than what she has before. And that may not seem that bad or difficult 
to deal with for some people. But my job today is to share with somebody, Chase, there is more to life than an up, down, up, down pursuit. There is more to life than you being hurt after you spike. There is more to life than you feeling terrible after you've gone up. There is more to life than you feeling worse than what it is when you started. There is more to life than you being better after you get worse and then going back to better and then going back to work. There is a constant love that can replace all pursuits of happiness and that love you find in the word of God. While you are pursuing what's wrong or lustful or short term, God is pursuing after you. This is the next thing I like you to type in the comment section. Type God loves you. You see, while Gomer was going out, chasing after that temporary fling, chasing after that temporary coupling, chasing after that temporary uh, fleeting moments of, 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 of passion as she was getting from different individuals, God was chasing after her. In this case, God was represented by Hosea. Hosea was chasing after the woman that he loved. You see, the one thing that you should know out there, wherever you're at, is this. There is someone who loves you. There is someone who loves you. So we don't forget this. Type that now in the comment section. There is someone who loves me in spite of me. There is someone who loves me in spite of me. You see, the enemy likes to mess with our minds and get us to believe that we are no more good in life. Because I've made a mistake or a series of mistakes or because I pursued happiness and, and found out the hard way that this is not where I want to be. Because I've gone into relationship after relationship, because I've gone into uh, different crimes or different different things that are morally wrong because I have lied or because I have stolen or because I've done bad things more than once. The enemy wants you to believe that you are no more good and you are useless in life. But listen to me closely. That enemy lies. He plays with your mind to get you to make a bad decision. Listen. God loves you in spite of you. And he is chasing after you because he loves you. And he's saying, come back home. Come back home. I love you. I am in love with you. I want to be with you. I want to be in a relationship with you where I can give you everlasting joy. It's not a, a quid pro quo situation when it comes to love as it is when you're in terms of lust. It's not a you give me this and I'll give you that type of thing. No, 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 no. You're going to be in everlasting joy and constant love when you accept the fact that God loves you in spite of you. There is no strings attached. There is nothing that you have to do that is morally gratuitous or bad or immoral in order to get him to love you. You love God because he loves you. The question is, will you turn away from lust and choose love? Will you turn away from lust and choose love? And this is what the voice that is in chapter 6, verse 1, 2, and 3, that's the voice that we're hearing. We're hearing a voice of love, super holy woman. We're hearing a voice of love, Johnny. We're Gigi. We're hearing a voice of love, and it's saying in verse number 1, come and let us return Unto the Lord. How, how do they even know to consider that? How? Because God has always been chasing after them, trying to get them to see that I love you and I want you to come back to me. They know that he will heal us. 
verse number six or verse number one. They, they know that what they have gone through previously is because of what they have chosen to put themselves in. Their actions while pursuing, pursuing lust, their actions while pursuing something that was wrong, Dorothy got them in that position. <laughs> have you ever put yourself in a position where... There was nobody else to blame but you. Come on, wave at me. Don't let me be the only one to think that I have done this. Have you ever been in a position? You can't blame her. You can't blame him. It's your fault that you were there because you decided, I'm going to keep on doing what I... All right, fine. You want to play with me? Okay. Come here. Let me, let me, let me. I did this the other night. So this lets you know that I'm still working out my own personal salvation with fear and trembling. <laughs> you know what I did? I know as a coach that you should eat certain foods to make you feel good. I know as a PE teacher, you, you, you should eat certain foods. I know as a person who has experienced health challenges all around me and my family, that you should do certain things the right way as far as health is concerned. Because if you don't, you'll get a bad circumstance. But you know what I did, GG? Danny, can I testify about this? You know what I did. Super holy woman, can I just tell on myself, you know what I did? Let me tell you what I did. Don't you judge me either. Don't you judge me. Let me tell you what I did. I went... To the donut shop. <clears throat> I pulled out my money. Almost as if I was in a trance. <sighs> Here's my money. And I bought a box of day-old donuts. Not one dozen, it's two dozen. And, and you know what? They had like the apple fritter ones, you know, the, the you know, the ones with all the little stuff in there that the, the, the special donuts. And they had the ones that was filled with custard. Oh, yeah, boy. The good ones. And you know what they had? They also had the old-fashioned donuts and the caramel ones. Oh, man. Yeah, boy. Mm, mm, mm. They had all those donuts. And you know what? I bought them in a trance. I was, Here's my money. Couldn't believe what I was doing. Here's my money. Take this. Okay. So while I was going in a pursuit of happiness, Chase... Buying the box of do two dozen donuts. I gave him my money. I drove home and then I began to do what? Rationalize with myself. You know how we do. When we're going forward, doing something we know is wrong, we try to rationalize with ourselves. Can I, can I preach this? Can I preach this, Benito? I rationalize with myself. Well, you know, I bought the donuts because it was a good good price but uh i'm only gonna eat one and then i throw the rest away I, you know i bought the donuts i can i can eat one to get the rest of the homeless people rationalize with myself i got them donuts home i pulled out a big glass of milk knowing good and well that i'm lactose intolerant i took the donuts i dipped them in the milk and i ate it mm, it tastes good when it was going down Oh, yes, it did. Hallelujah. It tastes good. So I got another one and I ate it. Mm, I'm only two donuts in. I still got like 24 more to go. I'm fine. It's good. I can still give them away. And I ate it. <sighs> Danny, after four donuts, two glasses of milk, three hours later, I was bedridden. I was on my bed because my stomach hurt so bad. Not only did it hurt so bad, I wanted it to get out. You see, it was good going in. It tasted sweet. But the after effects of it came back to haunt me. Now, I'm going to spare you the details. But just in three short hours, I knew I made a bad decision. Some of you could probably guess what happened about three or four more hours after that when it started to come out. 
I'm gonna spare you the details. But the point is this: some of us right now is eating donuts. Some of us right now is drinking milk. You keep going over to that donut head boyfriend, and you know that mm -hmm. <laughs> you keep drinking her milk, and you know oh, oh, it tastes good when it's going in. But for some reason, you don't understand that this pursuit of lust is going to lead to something worse than what it is. What I should have done is I should have put the donuts and the milk away and I should have just ate the meal that my wife had prepared. That would have filled me up much better and I wouldn't have had the same problems that I had when I ate the, bo when I ate the box of donuts and the milk. In the passage, the children of Israel are recognizing that what God had for us, the meal, would have sustained us as opposed to the donuts and milk that we pursued. If you understand the analogy that I just gave you, would you give me a thumbs up and just put a little donut right there so you understand that. The life application for you and I is this. God is pursuing you with a plate of food that's going to sustain you while you're still going after the donut head boy or the glass of milk girl. You know you're lactose intolerant, Leave her alone. You know you can't handle all those sweets, so leave him alone. Because that union is not producing anything that's God-like or Christ-like. Okay, you don't, you don't get it? Okay, you, 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 you're chasing the donut of alcoholism. You're chasing the donut of, of abuse. You're chasing, you're chasing after a donut of sin. You see all the donuts? That's up? Look, you see the donuts? Stop chasing after sinful behavior. In Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, the people of Israel are pleading back to God. They're pleading to God, recognizing that he is the one who has allowed them to go through this. And even though right now they got stomach aches as a result of their own wrongdoing. They're recognizing that God is still pursuing after them with love, trying to get them to go the wrong way, the right way. Excuse me. And even though they know that later on something worse is going to come because of what they've done. They know God still loves them. Here's my question to you as we bring this to a close. Are you going to keep pursuing after the donut and the milk? That is another way of saying, are you going to keep pursuing after lustful desires? Are you going to keep pursuing after things that are going to make you happy just for a moment, but bring you back down? Or will you turn around and pursue after the love of God, the one who is pursuing you? If you understand what I've just said and you see how it connects to the book of Hosea, chapter six, verses one through three, type in the comments section. I will receive God's love. I will receive God's love. In case you missed it, in case you just got here and you want to know the quick version of what we talked about, in 60 seconds or less, here is the snapshot. We looked at Hosea chapter 6, verses 1, 2, and 3. The children of Israel are recognizing that God has better intentions for them than the lustful desires they've been pursuing after in other gods. The life connection between us and this passage is this. We can choose to accept the love of God who is chasing after us. Or we can choose to pursue. Lustful desires or things that make us temporarily happy. Things that are often wrapped up in sin. My suggestion to you from experience is to put away what's wrong and lustful and go to what is right. Because the right thing is going to keep you away from harm, whereas the lustful thing is going to put you on the toilet. Well, 
Okay, let's do that last part again. The right thing is going to keep you away from wrong, wrongdoing and a wrong outcome, whereas the wrong thing is going to only lead you to paths of destruction. Are you following what I'm saying? Which way are you going to go? Today, if you're somebody who has made the decision to do what is right, I want you to say a small prayer with me. If you recognize that it's time to put away lustful desires, it's time to put away things that are only making me short-term happy, but instead I want to pursue something that is long-term and give me long-term joy. If you've made that decision tonight, this is your chance to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, or if you want to recommit your life, like Israel is doing, turn around, come back to him, say this prayer after me, say, Dear Lord, I admit today that I am a sinner. I'm sinning. I am being bad. But today I want to put all that away. I want to turn over a new leaf. I want to give my life completely to you. Lord, please forgive me of any sin I've committed against you. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Or I recommit my life to you. In accordance to Romans 10, verse number 9, I believe I'm saved. Or in accordance to 1 John 1, 9, I am giving my sins, confessing my sins, and accepting your forgiveness. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. No more donuts. No more milk. No more trying to find joy in fleeting moments of happiness. Amen. Family, thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. Hey, if you got something out of this message today, hey, consider uh, joining uh, our Patreon page or anything uh, uh, that you would like, you know, to support us, super chats and whatnot, or just sending in things uh, uh, to our PO box. That's great. But the best thing you could do, if you don't ever give a dime here, is share the love of God with someone anywhere. That's the best thing you could do. You know, do that. Share it. Share the love of God. Read the Bible. Family, friends, brothers, sisters, kids, grandkids. Share the love of God with them. Be that visual demonstration to them. Wherever God leads you. Got that. And again, that's what we need in these last days. Amen. Hey, have a wonderful day. Make sure you say bye to a few people out there. And again, I really appreciate you all joining me today for this weekly sermon. Uh, and coming from the book of Hosea, chapter one or chapter six, verses one through three. All right, everyone, take care and have a great rest of the day, everyone. Thank you very much. Much love. And respect. Bye, Johnny. Uh, bye, Casanova. Yes, it is beautiful weather over here. Thank God. Yes. Bye, Joshua. Lum, good to see you today. Good. Good. And wonderful to see you too, super holy woman. Sav, it's great to see you. All right. Great to see you all. Thank you so much for being here with me uh, today. Have a wonderful day. Bye, Gigi. Have a wonderful day.